Hey, thanks for tuning into the channel. Today we're checking out this all new Firefly FFJA, their take on the Jazz Master. Let's check out some tones. So let's talk about the good and the bad and the ugly of this guitar. The good part is, of course, the finish. I mean, look at that depth of that flame. It is a beautiful finish, beautiful pick guard. And you've got gloss on the neck, which really looks good. And this is, this is a comfortable gloss. Uh, it doesn't feel sticky over time. Uh, it might get that way, but you can clean it and be just fine. It has... Uh, a pretty normal looking headstock with the logo there. They call this their pure series. And the pickups, the, a lot of people think these are P90s, but they're actually just Jazzmaster pickups. So Leo Fender wanted to appeal to a jazz audience. He wanted to make something warmer than the single coils that he had in the Stratocaster. And so he made it wider and it did make it warmer but it didn't really wind up appealing to the jazz scene. Some surf guitarists picked it up and so it wasn't as wildly successful as some of his other guitars, but it has a unique sound. It is somewhere between a standard single coil and a P90. And the one downside to this is just the nature of the pickup. This is not just Firefly. Uh, I actually have an American professional to uh, jazz master here and they both they're a little more noisy than regular single coils so if you're playing in a place that has a lot of LED lights uh, it can pick up more hum that way it generally goes away when you touch the strings but if you take it off you're gonna get some noise and that's just the nature of single coils and especially these kinds of single coils are more susceptible to noise so there's nothing wrong with the pickup but they are just more noisy by nature. So just know that going in, you may need a noise gate to compensate for that, especially if you uh, want it to be dead silent when you're not playing it, you you might need that for sure. But it's not, it's, it's not a flaw within these pickups themselves. Compared to the Fender, you're gonna have a little less clarity in it, and that's to be expected. I, I imagine these are ceramic. I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't taken it apart, and I'm not sure I could tell the difference. But these, these are a modified uh, Alnico. You've got, I think, three and five magnets in there, and so you just get more clarity, a little more jangle with these. But I mean, fifteen hundred dollars versus two hundred dollars. You're willing to make a few concessions there. One thing you'll notice: this has an extra set of switches that. Uh, the Firefly, if I don't drop it, does not have. So it only has your three-way selector down here. Uh, and so that's one thing that's missing that makes it unique to a Jazz Master, or those, that extra set of controls. And it allows you to access uh, a different preset. You flip this knob up 
and it puts both the pickups in a series and so it it it's really good for solos you can set that to where you want it to really get some punch and so this one doesn't have that and again it's a concession you're willing to make for thirteen hundred dollars worth of savings you'll notice too the trim system is is different so this is the standard jazz master trim system and fender in the american professional 2 line upgraded that to where it will do some some dive bombs but it does actually bottom out if you put heavier strings on it even with tens on it and two and a half step down it it bottoms out earlier than this one would so this has a wilkinson tremolo system on it that's pretty standard for a strat and the good news with that uh, you're not really going to bottom out because you just take this panel off adjust the screws on the back and you will suddenly be able to adjust it um, and so that brings me to the number one thing with these guitars you need to invest in a setup so either learn how to do a setup yourself once loads of videos out there on youtube for how to do a good setup on your own guitar or pay someone and a professional in a shop to do it for seventy five hundred dollars extra it will make a very big difference in the playability and the quality of the instrument so out of the box what kind of setup did i have to do not a lot but this is something you need to learn to do if you're going to be investing in these budget guitars you need to learn to do your own setup so first thing i had to do i checked the neck to see if it's straight you can look down it like this and you can kind of see but a really easy way to check the neck is to just put your pinky on the 13th fret put another finger on the first fret and then tap down on the sixth fret and you shouldn't be able to uh, to hear much movement a tiny bit of movement is okay if there's a lot of space in there then you need to tighten the truss rod um, and that's going to make a big difference in your action and also in your, your intonation and just the overall playability the experience of the guitar that makes a huge difference if the neck is straight now the truss rod was actually there was no tension on it when i got the guitar the neck was pretty straight <clears throat> but there was no tension on it so that that freaked me out a little bit, but uh, with the tools that they provide, I was able to put it in there, tighten it, and very quickly get it set where it needed to be to get it straight. So it comes with three of these Allen wrenches, and you will need all of them to do a proper setup. Uh, your middle-sized one, three different sizes here, your middle-sized one will go for adjusting the action right here. Uh, that's going to adjust up and up and down uh, on your floating tremolo. It's got a two-point floating tremolo, so that means you can go up and down with the sound there. This Wilkinson, it's branded, so that's better than a no-name that you can't look up specs for. So you could, if you want to switch that out, you can read up the specs of the Wilkinson system and and you can swap it out. I think it's pretty solid. Looks like it might be difficult to adjust the intonation on it because you have to use the small, tiny uh, hex key here, the, the Allen wrench, to adjust that. And I imagine you would have to completely detune the string in order to move that. And when I say intonation, you can check that by playing a note, see if it gets in tune, and then playing it on different frets, see if, it, if it's in tune there and you can look up videos on how to do intonation as well this one is close uh, it, it's not perfect and like i said i'm not sure how easy it would be to adjust that aesthetically uh, i mean it's just it's a pretty flawless finish all the way around uh, except i don't understand this you've got a white uh, cap on your trim bar here. I don't know how easy that would be to replace. You've got cream color everywhere else. So it's not a huge deal and you probably could, I don't know, <laughs> uh, color that in some way. Maybe find a replacement. I don't know if Wilkinson sells these bars. It's a lot like the American Professional 2 in that this doesn't screw in. It just You just push it 
in there and it does so far stay in place really well and you can do some pretty serious dive bombs with that as well now you may prefer this to the real Jazzmaster one because of those dive bombs dive bombs and um you may not you may prefer the jazz master because it's a little more smooth you can do a little more nuance with it there you've got some pretty inlays on there they look like abalone i'm sure they're not but it it's pretty convincing and the only quality control issue i saw is that these frets are pretty pretty well dressed pretty smooth this one in the background, the little sister copy that I'll review later, it the frets aren't so smooth on that. I just bought that as well for the channel here. Um, but it, I don't know if you can see around this area, there is, it looks like a tool has actually, right there, uh, I don't know if you can see that, if it will focus, uh, there is a mark on the guitar there where it, a file has has chipped it or something and it's pretty rough you could buff that out you would have to invest in some polishing fret polishing tools to do that that's to be expected with quality control the guitar in this price range and again you need to be prepared to invest in doing your own setup fixing issues like that uh, the fret ends on this one are perfectly smooth i don't have any fret sprouting to me, fret sprout is not a deal breaker because it can happen just on humidity alone. It can happen on very expensive instruments. Rhett Scholl has a video where he has like a three or $4,000 guitar. He let the humidity get a little too dry in his house and it had fret sprout. It was a, it was a $3,000 Novo. Uh, so fret sprout can happen just if it, gets dry on the way shipping to you these things are coming from across the world you don't know what kind of humidity they're going to go through what kind of humidity changes they're going to go through so fret sprout is not a big deal it's annoying if it's there but you can fix that with sandpaper and still wool and this has no binding on it so you can round those edges while you fix it and it's not a huge deal breaker for me Overall, this is a solid investment of $200. Knowing you might have some quality control issues, you might have to do a setup, but it's well worth it in my opinion. Thanks for tuning in. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, I'd love for you to do so. If you've made it this far, maybe you've learned something. So help out the channel, just click that subscribe button. Have fun, keep playing. Thank mm -hmm. you.